What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to another Football Manager video. Today we are taking a trip down memory lane. Yes, we are loading up Football Manager 2010 ladies and gentlemen and we are going back. We're going to take a look at 10 wonder kids that were over a decade ago now, how they progressed in the eyes of Football Manager 2010 over the first 10 years of their career and then we're going to take a peek into FM 2020 and see what did become of those players. Did the game get it right over 10 years ago? Did they become the players that Football Manager 2010 thought they were destined to be? If you do enjoy this video, do drop a like on it. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and without further ado, let's get into this. So the first of the 10 FM 2010 Wonder Kids we're going to take a peek at is one that I think you're probably going to be familiar with. It's a Welsh guy. He played left back back in the day and his name, of course, is Gareth Bale, a Welsh international at 19. And as you can see from his profile way back when, he was pretty blooming good back in the day. Didn't have his explosive pace that he is perhaps best known for or his injuries at the time. I say that. He's literally injured in the selection details thing. But it's fair to say that FM 2010 rated Gareth Bale quite highly. And well, here is how he looks come 2019. Ten years later, we have a Gareth Bale who has got 66 caps for Wales, 29 years old, valued at 3 million. Yeah, worth noting that in Football Manager 2010, the values are weird because 100 million pound transfers weren't a thing back then but yes a very very good player but not a striker not an attacker very much a left back is Gareth Bale and you can see here he spent all of his career at Tottenham and then he moved in January for 1.6 million um, you might be thinking Gareth Bale known for his goals perhaps yes uh, 11 career goals for Gareth Bale um, mm, not not great his average ratings not particularly amazing either I do think he's not very good in this particular save game where we've simmed forward but you can see looking at him an incredibly complete player but not that attacking talent that he would go on to be and his speed I hate to say it massively massively underrated and well, for comparison, here is Gareth Bale in FM 2020. A few more international caps. Doesn't know how to play left back, but no injury, which I suppose is a silver lining. I must say his acceleration is a little bit lower than I expected, but you can see he is just not very good defensively. Probably not a player you'd want to train to play left back. Of course, at the start of FM 2020, he is still at Real Madrid, where he moved for £85 million a year. Football, you got that one wrong, FM 2010, and 125 career goals as well is not too shabby for him <laughs> yeah um this one is a weird one of course gareth bell did move drastically in positions uh it would be fair to say that even way back in 2009 he was considered a talent did people think he was going to be the kind of player who'd go on to play for real madrid i don't necessarily think so i think you have to give fm 2010 a pass but on a scale of one to ten of did it get it right i'm i'm gonna give it a three move on move on so the next player in this video is going to be one whom I'm thinking many of you expected to see on this list, Alexander Pato. And I think it'd be fair to say this is the only player who is worse in FM 2020 than he is in FM 2010. Yes, a sad tale indeed, of course, way back when, at 19 years old, he'd already played for Brazil internationally. He was playing for AC Milan's first team. And he looked like a player with the world at his feet. But injuries over the last decade were not kind to Pato. In real life, he now finds himself playing back in Brazil. And well, in FM 2010, the game thought he'd be at Barcelona by now. 55 goals in 64 appearances for Brazil. One of the great players of FM 2010. He's pretty blooming good, isn't he? Absolutely phenomenal. Mentals, technicals physicals he's actually got it all and if we look at his history here you can see he played for a number of years for AC Milan since then moved over to play for Barcelona has had a pretty good career look at those average ratings nuts stuff but by contrast it would be fair to say that in FM 2020 it's just not the same player we see here at 29 years old he has 27 caps 10 goals of course now playing his trade for Sao Paulo back in Brazil at least in this game, let's not forget, come FM21, he's currently a free agent. He could be a free transfer for you to go for. If you're not scared of the injuries, Pato might be a good first signing for FM21 for you. You can see, of course, across his career, he has moved around a fair bit. Went back to Brazil back in 2013, then went to Chelsea, Villarreal, had a few years in China, more recently moved to Brazil, and while currently finds himself without a club. And while looking at his profile in FM2020... 
it's quite a sorry sight, isn't it? Not every player makes it. Some players, you know, it comes down to attitude issues. Other players like Pato, it's simply they get unlucky. The next player in this list is one that if you didn't sign, you probably didn't play Football Manager 2010, or at least you didn't play it properly. Yes, of course, Neymar I'm talking about. The 17-year-old playing for Santos way back when. Tremendous dribbling and first touch, a player who was building a reputation around the world of football. And, uh, well, as you can tell from Football Manager 2010, they thought he was going to be pretty blooming good. And, well, it turns out he was pretty blooming good. You can see here in this simulation we did for the Brazilian moved to Real Madrid. I mean, that feels weird to say, although it was largely reported at the time that he may well have gone to Real Madrid uh, over Barcelona. Of course, it's not that unfamiliar to see the two Spanish sides fighting over the best Brazilian talent. And while in this save game, despite not having any 20s in attributes, nor being perhaps quite to the level he is in FM 2020, he's still a pretty blooming good player. You can see here he was snapped up by Real Madrid for £21 million. And since then, he has gone on from strength to strength. So whilst Barcelona have had Pato, Real Madrid have had Neymar. And while looking at his profile, very technically gifted, very quick, great mentals, just a super all-rounded player. And well, compared to FM 2020, he's really not that far off. I will give it to them. They got this one close. I feel like it's always difficult for the researchers to back a player as much as they possibly could have backed Neymar, because simply put, he is just one of the world superstars of world football. Of course, the image that you saw from FM 2010 in the future is merely a single save game. He may well get as good as this save game if you treat him right. But yes, a phenomenal player, still that dribbling really super standout. His physicals on the whole superb, perhaps not quite as good defensively as FM 2020 thought he would be. Of course, he made that move to Barcelona, albeit for 50 million. Yeah, a, a little more than the transfer fee that was previously predicted. And from there, of course, he went to move on to PSG for £195 million. That is an eye-watering sum of money. A player whom I'm sure if you played FM 2010, you have fond memories of signing and guiding your team to glory. When I say the name Romelu Lukaku, I think depending on who you support your opinion is going to vary quite drastically. Of course, the Belgian international, way back in 2010, was a tender 16 years old. But I say tender, he was anything but. He was an absolute titan of a player even back then. Despite not having any youth caps of Belgium, he had 17 strength, he had 15 jumping. Football manager had a pretty good read of the player they thought he was going to be. And uh, well, in our simulation, you can see he developed and went on to play in Syria, the league, of course, where he plays in real life. And uh, it would be fair to say he's a pretty blooming good target man who is not slow by any means. And uh, well, here you can see regular appearances for Belgium at 26 years old. 20 strength, I think, is the big standout attribute there. And uh, well, looking at his player history, he stuck it out at Anderlecht until 2014. That doesn't feel like what happened in real life, as we will see in a second. And well, in this alternative dimension, he settled down at Fiorentina for the long haul. A number of goals almost every single season getting double figures. That's pretty blooming impressive, isn't it, for the international? Yes, in FM 2010, it would be fair to say that Lukaku was a very, very good player. And well, if we compare him fully developed on this screen here to him fully developed in FM 2020, I am amazed at how accurate this one is. Of course, it's never going to be 100% accurate, but Lukaku, clearly they had the read on what kind of player he was going to be. Worth noting, he's a little bit quicker in FM20 than he was predicted to be in FM2010, and he's also been significantly more of a mainstay in the Belgium international team. 81 caps, 48 goals. We talked about that move in 2014 from Anderlecht that FM2010 thought would happen. Of course, he got his move midway through the 2011 season to Chelsea for £10.5 million. It didn't really work out there. A few loan spells where he saw success, eventually saw him move to Everton. Then, of course, the somewhat infamous move to Manchester United. But in the last 12 months, he has reinvented himself at Inter. And, uh, well, despite moving around a lot, it does appear like he is finally settling down. It's easy to forget that Lukaku is just 27 years old in real life, a player who is merely entering his prime now. And you know what? Football Manager 2010... You did good in this one. The Anderlecht researcher, give yourself a pat on the back, my friend. I am impressed. Let's -a go straight into the next one. It's Super Mario Balotelli. Yes, at 18 years old, playing for Inter Milan, a player who looked destined to have the world at his fingertips. And well, certainly Football Manager 2010 thought great things was going to become 
of the Italian striker and as you can see in our simulation aged 28 55 caps he has for Italy 51 goals this man is carrying the Italian national team's hopes and dreams on his shoulders valued at 19 million still playing for Inter Milan has not moved one little bit and we'll look at that goal scoring record with just a few exceptions consistently bagging double figures leading the way they don't need Lukaku in this universe because they've got Mario Balotelli hmm not quite what can be said is it over in FM 2020 where of course Balotelli is playing for Brescia of course moved around a little bit in recent years and well it would be fair to say that his club history looks a little different here it's what we just looked at over his time in Inter. Right now in real life, he's a free agent as well. So like Pato, if you're thinking about getting FM21 anytime soon, this man could be your first signing. I'm not sure if he would be my first signing. It'd be fair to say that compared to his FM2010 counterpart, he has not quite developed to the same level. You forget that he has played for the Italy national team, but not with the level of consistency over a number of years. Has been out of the team more recently. 14 goals, not quite the 50 plus that Football Manager expected him to have by this point, but... Not a terrible record by any means, but a player who's had lots of issues off the pitch, it'd be fair to say they've limited his ability to really settle down everywhere. And after a number of spells at a number of different clubs, he's not quite the player that Football Manager 2010 predicted, is he now? Coming in next, we've got another Italian stallion, Stefan El Shireri, a player who, of course, way back when was only 16 years old, a player with a very interesting career as well in real life. Way back when he was only 16 years old, Football Manager thought he was going to be pretty blooming good, and whilst you might look at his current ability here and think, uh, he's, he's okay, he's not that great, I remember personally having fond memories of this guy, and as you can see here, he's developed into a blooming good player. 18 first touch, 18 composure, 19 creativity. Yes, remember when creativity was a thing that's that that's a throwback where's vision it's not here i can't see it get vision see it move on move on very good player though started out at genoa did not move in my simulation here didn't necessarily put up the craziest of numbers but i think you can just tell from looking at his profile he was a player who was very very good in football manager and uh well it would be fair to say that in real life his career has taken a slightly different turn to this one because of course in real life he's gone to china yeah, I don't think in 2010 we knew that China was quite going to become the footballing mecca that it's become for players to go and collect a paycheck. But El Shireri, he's actually turned into a pretty good player, not quite perhaps to the levels that Football Manager predicted. Of course, he made a move from Genoa to Milan, and I think there was a lot of expectation on his shoulders, and he didn't really live up to the hype. He had a few injury issues as well, if I'm not mistaken, had loan spells at Monaco and Roma before moving to Roma, where... He had a little bit of an impact, but wasn't perhaps the player they were hoping he was going to be. Shanghai came a-knocking, and to this day, the Italian remained a player for them. He picked up some caps for the international team in his younger years. I don't believe he's been in the international fray more recently. If you're an Italian football fan, I'd love to know your opinion on this footballer. Of course, in Football Manager, he was only 16 years old in 2010, so it was quite a big punt, I suppose, and a big claim for them to say he was going to be this superstar player. But he's turned into an Italy international. He's played for some of the biggest clubs in the nation. He's collecting a huge paycheck in China. And it would be fair to say, I think he lived up to some of the potential that football manager thought he had. So coming in next, we've got James Rodriguez. Of course, a player who moved to Everton very recently in real life. And at 17 years old, he was plying his trade at Banfield over in Argentina. And football manager predicted... He was going to be pretty blooming good. 16 long shots. I think back to his World Cup kind of breakout appearances where he scored a few absolute screamers and think, yeah, that's pretty accurate. Great determination, great flair, very good physicals as well. Quite athletic, especially compared to how he is in Football Manager right now. But yes, at the time, he was very young, not really heard of across Europe, hadn't had that move to Porto. And uh, well, let's have a look at how he turned out because... We take a peek at him in FM 2010, fully developed. You can see here, he's good, 27 years old, playing for Dortmund. I'm sure Bayern Munich fans don't like the look of that. Interesting to note that he's got very, very good speed. It would be interesting to know that if, with all of Rodriguez's injuries, had he avoided them, would he have been able to keep that spring in his step? Or did he never really have it? Is it something that at 17 years old was just overrated by the researchers? You can see in this save game, he had a very, very weird career. 
He moved to FC Vasilui in Romania. He then moved to Dynamo Bucharest and then on to Dortmund. Yeah, he got around a little bit in his earlier years. He has now settled down in the Bundesliga without really putting in the greatest of average ratings or indeed appearances across the board. Had one good year, but besides that, not particularly phenomenal. What I would say is when you look at his attributes here, they are still very, very good. He's quick, he's creative, he's certainly a playmaker with a long shot. And while that does sound a little bit like the James Rodriguez I know, and well, here is James Rodriguez in FM 2020, of course, naturally a centre attack in mid, unlike in FM 2010 where he was a left winger or a centre attack in mid, he's got a little bit more versatility about him without necessarily having that pace that he possessed in the earlier games. You can see fantastic from a technical perspective, has very good long shots as you would expect, great flair, perhaps a little more technical and a little less physical than he was in the earlier football manager years, but at 27 years old, of course, he has now moved to Everton. And well, when you look at his career, he did have those years in the Bundesliga where he put in some numbers which actually aren't that far away from one of the seasons he had at Dortmund, incidentally enough. A player, though, who I feel like football manager got right in terms of his potential, maybe slightly misjudged exactly the type of player he was, but at 17 years old, stuff like that's going to happen. Still a pretty bold claim to claim a Colombian 17-year-old playing in Argentina is going to be a superstar of world football, but I'll give it to football manager. They did get this one right. He is pretty blooming good, isn't he? It's about time that we have a German in this list, given their international escapades over the last 10 years winning the World Cup. And while the man I've picked out is Tony Cruz, of course, a player who way back in Football Manager 2010 was one of the best wonder kids. Unfortunately, he wasn't particularly affordable and in year one he was out on loan. But at 19 years old, he was a very, very highly rated playmaker, either footed, valued highly and not particularly easy to sign. What I would say is, in contrast to, well, James Rodriguez, it seems like they kind of knew the kind of playmaker he was going to be. That 9 acceleration looks particularly poor, but if we now look at him come FM 2010 in the future, he's won a Ballon d'Or. Yeah, he's very, very good. He's developed incredibly. One of the best playmakers in world football. 20 creativity, 20 composure, 18 passing. Actually has a little bit more of a spring in his step than I think he does in real life, but very interesting to note that at the age of 19, he was expected to go on to big and great things. Of course, he hasn't won a Ballon d'Or in real life, but it'd be fair to say that if you were to compare him with his FM 2020 counterpart, there's not a real world of difference. And well, why don't we go and do that right now? And well, here he is. And if you were going to say anything, and this might seem mad to say, you'd have to say that he's overrated in FM 2010. That feels ridiculous to say for a German international with 92 caps, but he's not won a Ballon d'Or. He's not got 20 creativity. He's got 18 vision and 18 composure. I mean, still a very, very good player, of course. Don't get me wrong. In the Football Manager simulation, Fordy stayed at Bayern Munich here in FM 2020. Well, we know what happened, don't we? He stuck it out at Bayern Munich for a few years following on from those two loan spells at Bayer Leverkusen and then moved on for £24 million way back when in 2014 to Real Madrid, where he's been an ever-present part of their team, has won a World Cup as well. He's done pretty good. Is he as good as he was in FM 2010? I'd say he was a little overrated. He's not quite as complete as he. He's not got the same physicals, not as good defensively. And whilst he might not quite be up to the impossible standard set by FM 21, he's still a blooming good footballer. And well, here is the penultimate player on our list, folks. Gail Agbosamonde. He was a USA international centre-back you could sign from Braga. He moved to Braga, if I'm not mistaken, from Miami just a few months before the game released. A player who, at 17 years old, you can see here, had a very, very bright future ahead of him. 12th youth caps, one of the best cheap wonder kid defenders to pick up at the start of FM 2010. And well, here's how he developed, because I have a simulation forward, and as you can see, looking at things in the year 2019, he is playing for Karlsruhe in Germany, 27 years old, 49 caps for the USA, a player who played a lot, very good mentals, exceptional in the air, great strength, just a titan of a defender. And, uh, well, you might not really recognise his name, but let's go and have a look at how he did in FM 2020. This was one of the best wonder kids at centre-back in the early years of FM 2010. How was he doing now? Uh, is that right? Agbossum 
Bond. He's he's not in the game. He's not he's not in FM. He, where, I need to, I need to. Re, where is he? Where where is he? Agbosa Monday. Where are you, my friend? Okay. Uh, according to transfer market, he has not played football in years. Um, he went to Braga, then he went to Fort Lauderdale just four months after he went to Braga. Then he went to Sweden and Frankfurt, then back to Fort Lauderdale, did a round. He got an international cap for the USA, though. He got an international cap. Um, hmm. He's just not in Football Manager 20. I can't tell you how he did. Move on. Move, move. Next. Next. Agbosa Monday. I'm sorry, buddy. We're, we're going to the next one. And so the final player we have on our list today is Marco Verratti. And I've saved this one to last because I think this guy is very, very interesting when it comes to FM 2010. He was given ridiculous potential whilst playing in the under-20s, the third division Italian side. That researcher, the Pescara researcher, you've put your neck out on the line in claiming that Marco Verratti was going to be some kind of godlike player. It'd be fair to say that most of us have heard about him now, probably hadn't heard about him way back then. And well, here he is in FM 2010 in the future, playing it still in Italy, playing for Fiorentina, 10 caps at Italy, and at 26 years old, he just looks like he has the polygon of a deep-lying playmaker. Not necessarily got the crazy, kind of most athletic ability in the world, but from a creative and technical standpoint, he is superb. You can see in our simulation forward, he moved to Lazio in the very first transfer window. So clearly the football manager AI knew he was good. He then moved on to Barry in Syria before moving to Shakhtar and then back to Italy to play for Fiorentina for 12.75 million. And over the last two years, he's put in some pretty good performances. It's kind of mad to imagine that you could start as a third tier Italian team back on this version of Football Manager and end up with a player with this kind of potential, but it was fair to say they got it right. And when you compare this to FM 2020, I mean, the researcher has done a phenomenal job. This is absolutely insane. Because here we have Verratti, 10 years on, 26 years old. Let's not forget, he was 16 at the time this projection was made. And the researcher got it so close to perfect that I just want to give them a 10 out of 10. Give you, if the Anderlecht researcher got a star, this researcher deserves 10 gold stars. Verratti, of course, a name that you've heard about in world football, now plays for PSG. 33 caps for Italy. And it'd be fair to say he had some career. PSG recognised his potential early on. You can see he stuck it out at Pescara through those earlier years, then moved on for £9 million to PSG. And since then, has just been an ever-present part of their first team. One of the best deep-line playmakers in Football Manager 2020. Phenomenal work, once again, by that researcher. And one of the most accurate predictions out of all the players in this list. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. A little bit of a throwback, perhaps. Are there any players you would like to see me maybe revisit in a part two? If there are players that you can remember from over 10 years ago, get them down in the comments. Get them down there. Get them down. Maybe we will revisit this sometime in the future. If you have enjoyed this and want to see more content like this, smash the like button with FM21 just around the corner that there will be plenty more videos on the horizon. You're going to want to make sure you're seeing them. And uh, well, until next time, thank you for watching. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.